Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my Facebook Live. This is Thursday, March 7th, and I'm just double checking to make sure that everything's as it should be, and I have gone live. Yes, I am live. If you are joining me tonight, please do say hello. Let me know where um, you are watching me from. I've got so much to share with you tonight. Let me introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. My name is April Davis, um, and I'm an independent um, demonstrator with Stamping Up. I live in Spring Hill, Kansas. And I'm really, really excited to have you here tonight. Last week, I had to provide a recorded version. I feel like I have just really been traveling a lot. In January, I was in Maryland. I had some um, conferences that I needed to attend with my corporate job. I was in um, Philadelphia for a couple days. And then I was in Washington, D.C. And then in February. Hi, Kara. Good to see you. In February, I had I went to Boston and I was there for a week with my company. Um, March, I'm actually headed to Houston um, the end of next week. So next Thursday will again be a recorded Facebook Live. But I'm really, really excited about this trip because I'm going to Houston for a Stampin' Up! convention, our on-stage convention. They will um, give a sneak peek to the new catalog, the new annual catalog that will be coming out in May. Um, and so I will be bringing some goodies back with me and I can share some sneak peeks with all of you as well. So I will be there Thursday through Sunday next week. And then I've got a brief little trip in April to Arkansas. My husband is really, really excited to see the solar eclipse. And um, I have an aunt that lives in Arkansas and she is right where it's going to be total, a total eclipse. So we're going to go visit her for a couple of days so we can experience that. And then when we get back, then um, that weekend, so we get back on a Monday and that Sunday, the following Sunday, Ray and I are leaving for Greece for two weeks. So I've been thinking really hard how I'm going to be able to plan all of this um, with all of you. And so I decided that um, I was going to create a special class. I won't be doing a face-to-face -face class in April. I know those of you that are local, um, I do a face-to-face -face class um, every month. And um, for April, just because of everything that's going on, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I created a virtual class for April. And what's exciting about that is that those of you that are not local and can't come to my face-to-face -face class um, in Spring Hill, you actually have the opportunity to participate in this class. So let me tell you about it. So I was trying to figure out what theme I wanted for this. And um, since we're going to Greece, um, I, Ray and I were doing some chatting and Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. She actually is um, associated with like spring and vegetation. And um, there's a myth about Persephone that when she was coming back or returning from the underworld, it marks the arrival of spring. So I thought, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to tie in Greek mythology with my class for April while Ray and I are in Greece. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna scoot this over so you guys can see this. But I wanted to give you a little sneak peek of this class. It's called Persephone's Garden. And in this class, you will be creating, virtually, I will have a tutorial um, for you, but you're gonna be creating 10 cards. And um, I'll show you the stamp set that we're going to be utilizing, but we're actually going to be utilizing the Stampin' Up! Basic Note Cards on an envelope set. This set comes with 20 cards. We're going to be doing 10 cards with Persephone's Garden, which means that you have an additional 10 note cards left for you to create even more cards. But just really quickly showing you all the cards that you're going to be able to make. You're going to be making 10 cards, one of each card. 
In addition to the kit that you'll get for the cards, you're gonna get a full set of the purple fine shimmer gems that you'll see are sprinkled throughout the cards. Um, looks like I've got a broadcasting error connection closed by the server. Oh no, can somebody tell me if, if um, it recover broadcast, continue recording? Can you, Kara, I know you're there. Are you able to see me? Are we, are we still recording? I've never had this pop up before. Say hello, Kara, are we, are you there? Stop recording, continue recording, recover broadcast. I'm gonna try to recover the broadcast. Let me know if you're still there. I'm not sure what's happening, it scares me. Um, it looks like I'm still recording. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm trying to get to the part where maybe it's not, but I'm looking at the recording and I think I think we're still good. So um, it looks like we're still going. It looks like we're, I'm gonna keep going. If you guys know something different, let me know. Anyway, you're gonna get a full pack of the Purple Fine Shimmer Gems. And then um, I'm also going to provide you with a half pack of the, I'm gonna give you the total, the name, Perennial Lavender Paper. You'll get a six by 12 pack of this paper. And I have to show you this paper. It is gorgeous. Let me move this out of the way so it's not taking up space. Um, the paper is amazing. And I just love the idea of doing Persephone's Garden, welcoming in spring in April, and utilizing this beautiful. Thank you, Kara, for letting me know. That was scary. I don't know why that popped up. Um, but I didn't want to lose you guys, so I'm glad you're still there. Um, but look at how gorgeous this paper is. So you will receive a half pack of that. I'm featuring the Painted Lavender Bundle. So it comes with, obviously, the stamp set, and then you're also gonna have the dies. Um, and then I'm also utilizing the perennial postage. I'm featuring the bundle. So for this kit, you're gonna wanna have the bundle if you don't have it, or something similar to this bundle. You may have something similar that you can utilize with the kit, and that's great. The perennial postage has a lot of different um, sentiments, but what I really love about this set is the dies. And so I have incorporated the dies into the cards. Um, you can certainly make the cards, thank you, Kara. You can certainly make the cards without these dies. Um, you just won't have the little, the little postage um, marks on it. So this is not a required die. It's a nice one. This one, you, you might wanna have it, but again, if you've got something similar that's got um, stamps like this and dies like this, you can incorporate that into your bundle. You're still gonna get um, the paper, you're still gonna get the gems, and then I am also going to provide you, as needed, the ribbon that I'm utilizing on the cards, and then you'll also receive butterflies. You won't receive a full pack of either of these, but I'll provide you enough to work to do your cards. So that's Persephone's Garden, and I wanted to show you really quickly how you get there. If you're on my mailing list, you've already been informed of this. I'm trying to move stuff out of the way. You've already been informed of it, and I shared um, a link with you in my email. However, if you are not local to me and you're seeing this, you can actually go out to my website, April Davis Creations, go to Classes and Clubs, and then come down here to Persephone's Garden. <coughs> Excuse me. Once you're there, it will tell you all about the, the class. Um, and that registration is March 1st through March 16th. Um, and then the kit will ship approximately April 13th. So where it says register here, all you have to do is click on register here and it will take you to the registration page. I just need to close registration on the 16th to give me time to order the product and then also get all the kits cut and get them prepped to ship before I go to Greece. So while I'm in Greece, you guys will hopefully be um, working on Persephone's garden and welcoming in spring. So that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you. Let me, let me, um, I'm gonna try to join you guys. Um, there we go. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out um, today is that this is a to-go class. 
So all the information that you need for the to-go class um, is on my website as well. All you need to do is go to that and it will give you all the explanation, um, including the host code. You'll get your kit for free. If, you're, if, you, if you like this class, you'll get two um, of each card. So there's three cards. You'll get two of each card, um, the kit to make that. You do need the Everyday Details bundle that I'm gonna be showing you today but um, all the information is here and you just wanna be sure to use the host code. So let me come back and to my screen so that I can actually show you what we are creating tonight. Um, we're utilizing the Everyday Bundles um, kit, Everyday Details Bundle kit again. And um, we did that last week and we're gonna do it again this week. I think these cards are so pretty. And um, they're so fun to make. They're just, you know, it's kind of like um, anticipation of spring with the birds' nests and the flowers and everything. Um, you'll find that bundle in our mini catalog. Now, I need to remind you that the mini catalog is only good through the end of April. So if you're interested in this bundle, you want to be sure to get it before um, the end of April, and then I was just going to share with you, I think it's right here. I had it open for Persephone's Garden, too, or the perennial Lambeau. Um, but here we are with this. You'll get the stamp set, and I have that here, with the dies. And these dies, I love, love, love these dies. Let me pull this open. Um, we'll be using them again um, tonight. But I love the the technique that comes with these with all these little circles dots all right so let's go ahead and we'll move this off to the side and I'm going to get us started I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to be telling you if I think of it we'll we'll catch up at the end of the um of the to-go class so let's go ahead and we're going to do this card first so let me bring that kit out I've got to reach over and grab it and I'm actually going to take myself off the screen so that you can just see what I'm working on. There we go. So the kit for this particular card, fairly simple. We've got basic white for our card base. We have designer series paper for our layering. And then we're going to stamp the vase and flowers. And then I've also got a piece of cardstock for the sentiment. So let's go ahead and start our stamping first. And I'm going to bring in our vase flower and flowers. Um, these are rubber stamps, so I don't need to worry about any cushioning. And I'm actually going to use for this particular card, I'm going to use my Memento Black to ink. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my ink pad stamped up. You'll find that when I am utilizing larger stamps, I actually like to have my block up and then um, I just turn the ink over and stamp that way so that I can see that I'm getting everything covered, um, especially with my rubber stamps because I can't see through them like I can with my acrylic. So now that I've got this stamped, I'm going to go ahead and press it down. right in the center basically, because we're gonna eventually cut this out. So I wanna make sure I get a good transfer of the ink. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned off really quickly. Using my Simply Shammy. Got it all nice and clean. And whoop, we're gonna do some coloring. So let me move this back off to the side. I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Blends. I love to color with my Stampin' Blends. So I'm gonna bring in my Calypso Coral Light and Dark. Um, I actually, if you notice on the flowers for this um, original one that I did, I actually was using the Misty Moonlight. The Misty Moonlight seems just a little dark to me. It's fine, but I wanted it to be a little bit, um, uh, lighter. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Oh my gosh, you guys, it, it, this, this, um, <laughs> broadcasting error connection closed by server message, um, came up again. I'm watching very closely, um, to see if that's disrupting anything. I, I'm not sure if it is. Oh, okay. Things are moving along again. Thank goodness. Okay. So we're going to use that 
And then I'm going to use the um, soft sea foam for my leaves. And I'm also going to use the Calypso Coral for my little flowers. So let's color in the pot first. And a lot of times what I'll do with the pot, just to kind of give it some dimension, is go ahead and I'm going to color it in with the light Miss, or Calypso Coral to start. So let me get this kind of lined in so that I don't go out of the lines. And then I'm just going to color this in with the light. Then what you'll see me do is I'm going to come in from the sides with the darker um, Calypso Coral so that we can kind of give a little bit of dimension. So, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to do um, the ring around the top. There's this very little teeny tiny ring right around the top. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of coloring this way and a little bit of coloring this way. And then I'm going to take my light again and I'm going to color over the top of it. And basically what I'm doing as I'm doing that is I'm actually trying to get the two colors to blend together and soften so that I've got a little bit of, uh, not dimension per se, but um, I want it to blend in so it looks like there's highlighting in the center of it because of course this pot is, um, you know, round. It's not, it's not flat. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take the um, boho blue this time and I can't decide, do I wanna use the light boho blue or do I wanna use the dark? So I'm gonna test it. I'm just, cause I'm changing up this card. I'm gonna do some light and I'm gonna do some dark and then I can decide. I, either way, it's not gonna be darker than, uh, I think, mm, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the light because I do want my flowers to be just a little bit lighter. So let me move this off to the side and we'll go ahead. And what I'll do is I will accent or I'll highlight. Is this, this is the dark. All right, well, that's gonna be some highlighting as well. And I'm using the bullet tips. I don't wanna use the brush tip. So let me go ahead and get this colored in and I'll just blend that in and it'll just look like I have just a little bit of a darker edge on that one petal. That's what I love about the alcohol markers, the stamp and blends is that they blend really, really well. So where I started out with that dark, you can't even tell really. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna take the dark and I'm just gonna kind of take the lines that Stampin' Up has already put in the stamp and use that to kind of highlight that. And then we'll do the same thing with these smaller flowers. Get them colored in. There we go. Oop. A little bit right there. Gosh, I don't know where that message was coming from. I've never seen it before. And I, I all the videos that I've done or all the lives that I've done, I've never seen that pop up. So. I'm glad that it didn't uh, mess things up and you guys were still able to join us. Um, it is lagging. Thank you for letting me know that, Kara. Maybe, um, I don't know, there's something going on with the internet, but as long as um, it picks up again, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and color these little flowers in the dark Calypso Coral. And then Let's see, then I just have my leaves to do and I'm gonna do those in the um, soft sea foam. And these, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them in the light and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of highlighting in the darker color. So sometimes I play around and mix and match the colors, but um, I don't wanna spend all the evening coloring because there's two more cards I wanna share with you. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this colored in. I'll do a little bit of highlighting and um, we'll be done with this pot. So let me just take the dark. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just very lightly go over the vines. And um, 
it just will kind of accent those vines a little bit more. They've already stamped in, so I'm not changing anything. I'm just giving them a little bit more color. So we'll go down this one. And over here, we'll get this one, this one, and I'm gonna call it good. All right, so now we've got our pot um, colored. Before I go to the die cutting machine, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment as well. This sentiment is wishing you so much joy on this special day. So I'm gonna take the pecan pie ink and we'll go ahead and stamp that. And then we'll get this. There we go. And I'm gonna clean this off real quick. Close up my ink pad so I don't get my fingers in it. And now the two dies that we're gonna be utilizing are going to be this little bitty die um, that's just got um, a little bit of, it's not really a stitch, they're just little tiny dots that are gonna go around it. And then we're gonna use this die that's going to frame in the pot. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna get my low tack adhesive tape out so I can get these centered. So we'll do this one like so. Put that down and then this one, I'm going to make sure that I get it centered. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll bring in my mini cut and emboss. Put down my sandwiches. This is my cutting plate. We'll go ahead and run this one through first. Pull this one off and then we'll run this one through. these out of the way. Oh, this is over here. Okay, so let's take these apart. Save my tape for my next project. There we go. I just love these dies. Look how pretty that is. If I had been thinking properly, I would have centered that when I stamped it more appropriately, and then I would have had a frame that I could utilize. Um, and I don't know, I might be able to trim it up on the sides so that I still could use it as a frame, but I didn't really have it lined up appropriately. And then um, I'm not gonna be using this again tonight. I don't think, I'm, I'm talking about the die. Um, but I am gonna show again, just with these dies, um, the little dots do get stuck on the inside and you have two choices. You can either take your take your pick and poke out every single dot, or you can get the attachment that goes on your take, and your take your pick. This will screw off. This is my putty end. This will screw on. And then all I have to do is take my foam mat that actually comes with this, and then I can just roll over my um, die, and I can get all the little dots out that way. So I roll over the die, and what's nice about it is the foam pad then captures all those little die dots that um, are part of this die. I don't mind the dots, um, but I, I'm grateful to have my little brush to help me clean them out so I don't have to spend all my time trying to poke all those through. All right, I think we're pretty close to having this done. I'm gonna move this over to the side. We'll clean that up later. What I wanna do now is I wanna to start to assemble the card. So let me pull my sentiment out and we'll pop that out. Got some stray little dots we'll put back on the foam and I'm gonna put that off to the side and let's go ahead and assemble. So we're gonna bring our card base in, fold it in half and burnish the edge so it lays flat. And we'll start by adhering the layer with the designer series paper. 
hate to cover up these little birds, but um, I like the other side as well. That's the hard part with designer series paper, and I love our designer series paper. I also love the fact that it's two-sided because you have so many more options, but gosh, when you like both sides, it's really hard to cover one of them up. So let's go ahead and get this centered the way that we need it. I'm going to pick it up and just look to make sure. I think I'm off just a little bit, only on the fold, not the centering, but I don't think I got it folded quite right initially. So I just want to make sure that I get this straightened out. I'm going to scooch it while my glue is still allowing me to do so. All right, now we're going to put our vase on, and we're going to put the vase on with dimensionals. So let me bring my dimensionals out. And we'll put one in each corner. And oops, we'll put one here in the center. Do I have any more? Yep, I do. All right, so let's put one here and one here. And I will take my take your pick and I'm just gonna pop these off real quick. Did I get that one? Uh, there we go. Put these in the bin real quick, get them out of the way. And now I can turn this over. And now what I wanna do is I wanna center this in my card as well. So I'm kind of looking to make sure that I get it where I want it to be. I think this is before I press down. Uh, maybe over just just like a teeny tiny little bit. I want to make sure it's straight from not too wobbly either. All right, I like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to adhere our sentiment. And because our vase is already popped up, we don't need to do any popping up on the edge of this sentiment. But this part of the sentiment does need a dimensional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my dimensionals and I'm going to cut off a little piece of it, make sure I'm getting it on the right edge. And it actually is gonna be a little long, so let me trim this up just a tad. And I'll put it right here, okay. And then we'll go ahead and take this off and this off. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this edge of the sentiment. Whoop. Pick that up, turn it around, and then I'm gonna just align it right down here at the bottom a little bit. So we'll do it about right there. Okay. And that card is done. Look how pretty that is. And you can see I did things a little bit differently. I've got a darker pot and lighter flowers. Um, lighter pot, darker flowers. Oh, I didn't finish. We also have embellishments. I love these embellishments. These are called the Opaque Faceted Gems. And they've got, let me see, did they say what the colors are on the back? They really go with the Calypso Coral. So I'm going to, they're not as dark, but... Um, they do go with it. So, oh, I took my putty end off. So <laughs> I need my putty. So I'm going to screw this back on. And then I'm just going to take three of these. I'm going to take this one. I actually, my putty was um, low. So I did a little bit of squeeze. And when you do a little bit of squeeze, it pops back out again. So I had a little bit more putty than what I needed. And then we'll do um, these little ones down here. Put one up here and one here. And now this card is done. Get this little trash out of the way. Again, so pretty. I love these. All right, let's move to card number two. So card number two is... Oh, let me pull it over here. It's our bird nest. So let me get that kit. We've got the basic white again for our card base. We've got a piece of Lost Lagoon. 
This is cardstock. It's going to be our mat for our designer series paper. And then I have a piece of um, basic white cardstock that we're going to stamp our nest on, and then we're going to cut our nest out with the dies. So let's go ahead and get our nest stamped. And this time for this one, I'm going to be using the basic gray ink. Um, I think I might have used black on the first one, maybe. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use basic gray this time. So we'll go ahead and get that. And I want to make sure I get it centered as best I can here because we're going to be cutting out around it. Let's see how I want its position. Probably right about like this. So go ahead and get my, my nest stamped. There we go. It still looks dark, doesn't it? But it is basic gray. Um, it's just not that stark black. Oh, I need to get the right um, case out. I need to clean the stamp. So we'll get that all cleaned up. And let's go ahead. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in the nest with crumb cake. And then we'll color in the eggs with the Lost Lagoon as well. So let's go ahead and start with the nest. I'm going to start with the lighter of the crumb cake, and I'm just going to color the entire nest for right now. So we'll get that done. I think the other reason why, and I'm going very light. I'm not like dragging my marker on this. I'm trying to stay light because... I stamped with an ink. I didn't stamp with the Memento ink, which the Memento ink is supposed to um, prevent bleeding. <coughs> Excuse me. And it doesn't mean that you can't use your alcohol markers with um, other inks. My point is, is that sometimes it just kind of fades it a little bit. Blends Maybe that's what I should say is it blends the ink a little bit more where this, the, um, the, the memento ink doesn't tend to um, bleed as much, if that, if that makes any sense. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start outlining the pieces of the, the nest with the darker um, crumb cake. And while I'm doing that, I apologies for the coughing. I um, when I was in Boston last week, I had a really bad cold. In fact, I'd lost my voice. And then when I got back, um, wasn't doing very good over the weekend. The weekend just kind of under the weather, still had the cold. By Monday, I was feeling really, really bad, and um, I was. Um, I just knew I had a sinus infection. So I went ahead and went to Urgy Care on Monday and sure enough, had a sinus infection. So um, they put me on antibiotics. I am doing so, so much better. I still have residuals, um, obviously, but I'm doing so much better than I was before. So you will hear me cough periodically, but um I really am doing so much better. Okay, so we've got our nest colored in. And I'm just going to show you the difference. Um, I believe I did use the black on this nest. And you can see how it didn't blend out like the basic gray blends out. It just kind of mutes itself a little bit. And if you like that, um, then, you know, by all means do that. It's not my favorite but I did want to kind of show you the difference between the two. And so I'm really just being very, not splotchy with my nest, but you know, they're twigs and twigs are not supposed to be nice and even. So we've got that. I'm going to bring in the um, soft sea foam again, just to get, I don't, sorry, I'm, I don't want to use the brush tip. I want to use the bullet tip. So I'm going to go ahead and get my leaves colored in for this nest. And then we will work on the eggs. And I feel like I'm going to have kind of the same 
um, scenario with these eggs. So I'm gonna try to go really lightly with them. So I'm gonna use the Light Lost Lagoon bullet tip to color in the eggs initially. And again, I'm gonna try to not um, touch the gray any more than I have to, um, just because I don't want it to not bleed, but it just kind of becomes a little bit less crisp, if you will. Um, so let me go ahead and get these colored in. And then what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of highlighting with the darker. But I am working to kind of stay away because I don't want that gray to bleed into my eggs. Don't these look like robin eggs? I mean, maybe robin eggs are a little bit bluer, but they, they kind of remind me of robin eggs. All right, so let's get a little bit of detail here. Here and here. And I'm not putting in detail that Stampin' Up! hasn't already put in. And then maybe what I'll do this time, because I want to go light, I am going to take the brush tip this time, just so that I can kind of softly blend in those eggs. And I don't know if my bullet tip will be soft like this. Is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I'm just, again, I'm just not playing around per se, but, you know, I'm, I'm just testing the water, so to speak. I know what it's capable of doing, and I just want to prevent um, any more fading than I have. Because you can see the difference between the two nests. You can just see it. All right. So the nest is done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our circular die, and we're going to line it up around the nest. It's still going to be pretty. I'm going to take my tape and see that I get this lined up the way that I need to get it lined up. Oh, that looks good. Bring back the cut and emboss. And get this cut, and then we'll start to assemble the card. So let's go ahead and put this down. Okay, let me see if I can fix it. I wonder what happened. I'll, I'll show it to you guys and then we'll see if we can fix this. I bet we can. You can see it just didn't cut right here. I don't know why that was the case. It wasn't that close to the edge, I didn't think. But here we go again. So we're gonna line up our holes, which is nice because the die just fits right into where we were. I'm going to take some tape and put this back down again. And we're gonna cut it, we're gonna send it through again and see if we can fix that. All right. So my stamps. And we had plenty of room. Let's do this again. Okay, it was off set just a little bit. I didn't get it lined up quite as well as I wanted it to, but you know what? Um, we're just going to go with it for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build the card, but I'm probably going to take this off and redo it again um, off camera because I, I don't want to take the time to have to fix it again. But typically, had I gotten those lined up appropriately, I'm off just a tiny bit, but had I gotten them lined up, then it would have been fine. But we're going to go ahead and create the rest of the card. Sometimes things happen. And the good news is, is I can fix it. So I'm not even worried about it. Um, I'm just a little embarrassed. <laughs> but you guys know I make mistakes all the time, so I shouldn't be. Um, I show you how to fix them. And if you can't fix them, then you just do it again. But I won't put you guys through that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Adhere my cardstock, or excuse me, my designer series paper to the cardstock and get it lined up. And let's see, maybe I want to go this way just a tiny bit. Yeah. And then we're going to take our Lost Lagoon ribbon 
and I'm going to wrap it. And you've seen me do this before, but basically what I'm going to do is rather than wrap it all the way around my cardstock, um, I'm going to save on my ribbon and I'm going to use my ribbon shears and I'm just going to cut off enough that now I can wrap it around and we'll put it at right here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out my tape and I'm just going to take these down. So I'll take this side down and then let me make sure that I've got this at least lined up appropriately. And then I will take this side down and this is going to get glued to the card base. So I'm really not worried about it, but this is the easiest way to get the um, ribbon down. Now that the ribbon's down, I can go ahead and I can cut an additional piece where I can tie a bow or tie a knot. This time around, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it here and I'm going to take it and I'm just going to tie a little knot here. We're not going to even worry about the bow, but I'm going to do this. And we will trim these edges up. Let's see if we get that. There we go. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to take dimensionals. And I'm going to go um, pretty light on the dimensionals because I am going to be taking this off so that I can redo it. But we'll just go ahead and we'll just... Take some dimensionals and put some here and some here. And it will come off. And um, I, one of the things that I haven't shared with you is while I'm in Greece, um, because I'm going to be gone, I won't be doing um, card to go classes, card to go classes. However, I am going to be doing um, several. Um, classes that will be one is um i'm trying to think one is techniques so i'm going to do a, a to go a facebook live for techniques i'm going to do a facebook live for tools and i'm going to do a facebook live for tips so i'm going to share a lot of different things with you one of the things that you see me use and um, it will be part of my tools that i use is this undo remover so once I get, and I'm going to actually put it on my base first, but once I get my um, nest down, because I know that I want to redo this one, I'll just use my undo with it. And I will I will give you more information on this undo. I know you've seen me use it before, but I'll spend a little bit more time on it um, when I'm doing my tools, because this is one of my tools. It's not a trick. It's a tool for me, and I have it right here in my craft room, and I actually have it in my um, card classes as well because there's no sense you know throwing a project away or starting over when you can really fix whatever the problem was with some undo it's it's an amazing product all right so let me go ahead and get this centered I wanted to get this down before I put my circle on so let me get this centered but I'm really excited to share um, tips and techniques and tools with you. We'll have a separate video um, that I will um, schedule so that it will play while I'm in Greece. So while I'm in Greece, um, I'll still be here with you. All right, now we're gonna take the nest and we're just gonna like lay it right here. And let me see, I can tuck it under a little bit if I want to. And we'll put it right here. So this is, the same card is this one. Obviously, you can see a little bit of a difference. I did the bow differently this time, just to show you a little bit of variety. Some people don't like to bow, tie bows, so you can tie a little knot. Um, I did put um, do use the gray, and um, you can tell the difference between using the black and using the gray. So now you see there's a couple of options that you can take um, when you're creating your card, but that is card number two. So let's go ahead and we're going to bring in the last card. This is card number three. And this kit is right here. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And I have my card base. Again, basic white card base. 
we have um, some designer series paper that we're going to stamp on. We're going to stamp the sentiment on here. We're going to stamp the teacup on here. And then this is just a piece of um, Night of Navy cardstock. Is it Night of Navy or is it, let me look, Misty Moonlight cardstock, sorry, um, that we're going to utilize as well. So we've got um, some die cutting that we're going to do, but before we get to the die cutting, let's go ahead and get our stamping done. So let me move this stuff out of the way. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the designer series paper and we are going to add some of those dots to the designer series paper with our Misty Moonlight ink. So let me pull the Misty Moonlight ink out. And let me see, how do I want this? Do I want this? No, I kind of liked it this way. So no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to take and I'm going to stamp. And don't squish, just stamp straight down, straight up. And then I'm going to turn it a little bit so that I'm getting some variety on how it's being stamped. And uh, maybe a little bit right here. And I don't know, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, another one right up here. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Get this cleaned off. You can make your own designer series paper. Of course, um, I was doing that on designer series paper, but you can do a lot more to it. So we've got that. And then now I'm gonna take the teacup and I'm going to use the, do I have the teacup out? Oh yes, I do. I'm gonna use the, the, the Memento ink because I'm gonna be coloring again with my uh, alcohol markers, my Stampin' Blends, and I want a nice crisp stamp with my teacup. So let's go ahead with that. And I'm gonna be actually die cutting it out, not die cutting, I don't think we have a die cut for it. I think I fussy cut this out. So let me stamp it this way. So we've got that, I'll clean that in just a second. I wanna go ahead, I think what I'm gonna do, I think last time this Overjoyed, I stamped it in um, the black as well, since I I'd stamped the teacup in the black. But I really like the Misty Moonlight theme. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna change things up, and this time I'm going to stamp it in the Mr. Moonlight, and it's overjoyed for you in this new journey. So I wanna make sure I got this covered well, and I'm gonna bring it over to this side, and I'm gonna stamp it. There we go. I think I'm gonna like that. All right, let's clean my stamps off, both of them. And then we will do some coloring on the teacup some cutting on the die. Yeah, in fact, I remember, we don't have a die for it because if you remember right, the dies for this bundle, where are they? They're really more dies that go with the set, but they don't go with the stamps in the set, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna pull this one out. We are gonna be utilizing this one in just a minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. And let me see, we also are gonna be utilizing, we're utilizing most all of the stamps tonight, uh, this little die. So I'm gonna pull that one out too. All right, so let's go ahead and work on our teacup. The teacup is in gray. So I'm gonna use the light smoky slate and the dark smoky slate. So we'll start with the light and I'm just gonna color and color in the entire teacup. So, trying to go fast, but I don't want to go outside the lines either. I think we talked about this maybe the last time I was coloring. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I didn't like going out of the lines, so I would take my crayons and I would outline the, um, the picture that I was coloring with. I would outline it first before I would color it so that I made sure that I didn't go outside the lines. So kind of, kind of sort of like I'm doing now, but um, you could definitely tell that um, I had outlined the picture. So everything, all of it was 
outlined first and then colored in. And the outline was always darker than the rest of the coloring. All right, so we've got this colored. And then I'm going to take the dark um, smoky slate and I'm looking for my bullet tip end. And basically everywhere that Stampin' Up! has provided some shading is where I'm going to do the shading. So I'm just going to go over these lines very simply, just kind of flicking, if you will. I don't even think I'm going to color over them with the light again to blend them in. I kind of like the way that they're setting right now. So we'll go ahead and get these done. And then I am going to take some of the dark. Let me see if I can find it. Um, is this the dark? This is the light. I need the dark crumb cake because I want to fill in my tea. So I want my tea to be a brown. All right, we'll do that. And then I'm going to take the Misty Moonlight. Really going rogue here. Um, and I want my little, oh, I see where I didn't get some gray. All right, I'm gonna do my little band. I'm really going classy with this teacup. I'm gonna do my little band in the Misty Moonlight. And you can see now where I need to take my light smoky slate. And I missed um, just a few little places right here where this is my cup. Okay, now let me move this out of the way. We're going to use Calypso Coral for the teacup or the flower. And um, we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna do the whole thing dark. So we'll go ahead and get this colored in. I do like coloring. Um, it, it, to me, it's relaxing. I don't want to go so slow because, you know, I'm I'm <laughs> doing a Facebook Live with you, and um, it may not be relaxing for you because I'm the one doing the coloring, but um, I do really enjoy coloring. All right, now I'm going to use the darker um, soft sea foam. Not much blending going on here. Excuse me, I'm gonna get a little bit of light. You probably won't be able to see much of it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now what we need to do is cut this out. So I'm just gonna do a really quick um, fussy cut with it. Not hard, I'm gonna go uh, around the leaves, not detailed wise. I'm just gonna kind of give them some space. So we'll go ahead and get this fussy cut. So we'll go this way. So very excited about my trip to Houston. Um, it's a big event, a big Stampin' Up! convention. And um, we're going to be receiving quite a bit of training um, just for, you know, business purposes. But then um, a lot of the new product that's going to be released will be displayed and demoed. So we'll have some ideas about that. Um, but it's just fun to get together with everybody. It, the room, the convention center is just buzzing with excitement. Everybody's sharing. And during this time, um, they also do a lot of recognition for um, top demonstrators. So I'll get to meet a lot of the demonstrators that I actually follow on YouTube. I get a lot of inspiration from um, the demonstrators that share on YouTube as well. Speaking of YouTube, while I'm finishing this up, um, this is Facebook Live. And so if you're watching me on the Facebook Live, if you haven't had a chance to already, um, please do um, follow me on my U Facebook Live and like for me. And then um, all of these videos get posted to YouTube. So after my Facebook Lives, they get posted to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, 
I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and like my channel. I'm really, really working hard to grow um, both my Facebook and my YouTube. Eventually, I eventually, I'm not ready to go there yet, but I will be going live on YouTube as well. So I have to figure out technology to know how to go live on Facebook and to go live on YouTube at the same time. And I'll get there. Right now, it works for me to go live on Facebook and then upload it to YouTube. But I know that there's a lot of people that watch me on YouTube. And so if you haven't had a chance to um, subscribe and like, please, please do so. All right. Now we've got this cut out. So we've got both things ready to go. Let me move this stuff out of the way so we can actually start to assemble this card. All right. So move that out of the way. And then I'm going to bring my card base in. And before we actually can assemble, I do want to um, cut. If you see on this card, the technique is this die has actually cut through. So you've got your little um, design with the holes in it. So let me bring this back in. Actually, actually, I'm not going to be able to do it on my little cut in the boss. So I'm going to have to bring the big guy in. So let me move this out of the way. And I crank from this side. So let me get my plates here. So we'll put these down. This sandwich and this sandwich. All right. So let me move this back. Now what I want to do is I want to put this just to the inside. But I want it to be straight. So I'm wondering how I want to do this. I think... Uh, I think that looks good. I think I'm going to do that. Ex okay, good. Um, I was worried that I had um, cardstock in my holes, but I don't. So let me move this like this, and I'm going to tape it down in a couple of places just because I don't want it to move. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to turn it this way and put my top plate on, and we're going to crank it through. Let's try something because I've got holes in this one too. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to poke these out because they're still part of the cardstock. So I need to just poke them out very quickly with my take your pick tool. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys another tool. This is going to be <laughs> part of my video as well, but... As you can see, I've got quite the mess going on here with all of these little dots. So I have this little mini vacuum cleaner, and um, I'll give you more information when I do my tools part. But basically what I do with my vacuum cleaner is when I have these little dots that are all over the place, I just use my vacuum sweeper and it cleats them all up for me. So we'll spend more time on this on the next video as well. All right, we've got this done. Everything is poked out. And I'm gonna fold this in half. Make sure it's lined up good. Okay, get this burnished with our bone folder. And then we're gonna take our die, or our, excuse me, our um, designer series paper, and we're gonna take our cardstock. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I want my cardstock to align with my designer series paper. I, I, the reason I wouldn't put this down first, I mean, I could, but I maybe risk, for me, maybe not getting it quite exactly the way that I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my designer series paper and I'm just gonna do a little line of glue right here. And I'm gonna bring in my Teflon, um, my silicone mat. 
and I'm going to lay my strip down. And we'll talk about the mat more in my tools as well because the, I use this a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get this lined up the way that I want it. And I'm going to do a little bit of adjusting with it. I've got it here. Okay, very good. So now what I can do is I can take this, get my glue bottle lid out of the way, pick this up, and now I'm going to tear the whole thing down to the card. All right. So let's turn this over. This is the top for me. And I'm just going to line this up the way that I want it. Make sure it's even. Okay. Works for me. And then I'm going to bring in some more dimensional. Let's see, I've got a new pack right here, and we'll just go ahead and put a couple of my sentiment, and then I'm also going to put dimensionals on my teacup, so we'll put them right here, right here, and I'm going to put a little bit right here and then the rest of that teacup's going to hang over my sentiment so we'll go ahead and get the sentiment down pull these off and i'll adhere the sentiment basically centered in the piece of my designer series paper so probably right there looks good okay and then we'll take the teacup do the exact same thing Sorry, getting these little dimensional pieces out of the way. And then this is going to fit on top of this so it doesn't need to be popped up. We're going to move it over to the side so it's hanging over just a little bit onto our design. I'm sure I got my teacup straight. I feel like it's a little crooked. There we go. And now we have this card done. So simple, so easy, so pretty. I love these cards. I, I, I love this bundle. Um, so let me bring these back in. So this is card number three that we did. And then we've got card number two. I'm going to put my favorite on top. <laughs> but we have card number two. And then we also have card number one. And um, I love both of those. I, I really, I love them all. Um, if I had my druthers, I probably would not use ink to color with um my alcohol inks. I just haven't gotten that mastered yet. I like the, the crispness of the stamp if I'm not using ink. So the, that's why the memento ink is so important when you're doing any kind of coloring, especially with your alcohol inks. All right, very good. Let me bring myself back up to you guys just to say thank you. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anything that I have forgotten to share with you. Next week is going to be a recorded version. Um, we're starting a new bundle next week, so I'm really excited to share that with you. Remember, this is a to-go class, so if you are interested in receiving these cards for free, the kit for these cards, then you need to be sure to place an order in my online store. And all the information is at aprildaviscreations.com. But you want to be sure to, when you place your order, to use the host code. And then that's my signal that you are interested in um, the kit. And you'll get all three cards, two of each card. No stamping is done. No die cutting is done because it's all associated with the bundle. So if you've got the bundle, great. If you don't have the bundle, you might want to get the bundle. Um, or maybe you've got something that's very similar to this that you can utilize, which is great. Um, so next week will be recorded. And don't forget about Persephone's Garden if you're interested in the April virtual class. It's open to everybody. It's not because it's a virtual class. Um, I can offer it up 
to everybody who's watching. So if you're interested in that, go to apraldaviscreations.com. And um, I will see you guys all next week virtually, but I'll be back the following week. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.